Hello everyone, this is Lucia with My Hiding Place, and today I bring you a new word entitled A People of Idolatry, Part 2. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of Yah. Dear brothers and sisters, these past few days the Holy Spirit has been pressing on my heart to come out and give a couple of clarifications regarding the last word that I released entitled, A People of Idolatry, and more specifically, the statement where Yah said that He is no longer receiving prayers from and for those individuals who persist on living a life of sin, and then present themselves before His altar, expecting their prayers answered. From what I got from the Holy Spirit, some listening to the word question what was meant by do not pray for these people mentioned in Jeremiah 7.16. To answer the first question, why is Father no longer receiving prayers from these individuals, let's look at the following scriptures. Isaiah 59, 1-2 Behold, Yah's hand is not shortened that it cannot save neither his ear heavy that he cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your Elohim, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Brothers and sisters, it is imperative that at this stage of the game we understand that what impedes our Father from hearing and answering our prayers is directly related to sin. If we think we can go through our Christian walk casually, never examining ourselves, nor coming into Father's presence to ask Him to search our hearts and show us our faults, we are gravely mistaken. The Bible is clear that our sins separate us from Yah. Every time we commit a sin and fail to repent, we build another wall. So imagine if you were one who is not keen on repenting, how many walls you may have dividing you from the Father. If we truly desire to please Him in everything, to walk with Him, then we must take ownership of our sins. And every single time the Holy Spirit prompts us, we must ask for His forgiveness. Do we understand how much our sins, which are basically our disobedience from Father's commands, grieve His heart? Do we understand how much our rebellion breaks his heart and hinders us from having a life in complete communion with him? It is not possible to please him and remain in a state of ungodliness. Dear brother, sister, if this is you, please do not play with your salvation. It is not worth it. Commit your life completely and wholly to Father. Let the Holy Spirit come into your life, search your heart, help you repent, and stay away from evil, for the wages of sin is death. Now the next question, what did Father mean when he said that he's no longer receiving prayers for these people? Jeremiah seven twelve to 16 But go he now unto my place which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did to it for the wickedness of my people Israel. And now, because ye have done all these works, saith Yah, and I spake unto you, rising up early and speaking, but he heard not, and I called you, but he answered not, therefore will I do unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein he trusts, and unto the place which I gave to you and to your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. And I will cast you out of my sight, as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up the cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Jeremiah 14, 7 12, 10-12 O oh, Yah, though our iniquities testify against us, do thou it for thy name's sake, for our backslidings are many, we have sinned against thee. 
Thus saith Yah unto this people, Thus have they loved to wander, they have not refrained their feet. Therefore Yah doth not accept them. He will now remember their iniquity, and visit their sins. Then said Yah unto me, Pray not for this people for their good. When they fast, I will not hear their cry, and when they offer burnt offering and an oblation, I will not accept them. But I will consume them by the sword, and by the famine, and by the pestilence. In these passages we see how Yah instructed Jeremiah to not pray for those who were indulging in wickedness, because judgment had already been pronounced against them. No prayer was going to change that. The vast majority of them were marked for the slaughter, for famine, for destruction, but a remnant was going to be refined through the sufferings and come out like pure gold. Father's goal is on getting us into heaven, for he does not wish anyone to perish and experience eternal separation from him in hell. But in order to do that, purging and cleansing is indispensable. Yah is not trying to discourage us from praying for our loved ones, but he doesn't want us to get in the way of him bringing about a miracle in their lives. Think about this. Imagine you have a family member, someone really close to you, who is consistently refusing to repent, and you know hardships are coming his way to purge him and get him ready for heaven. If your instinct kicks in and automatically engages in prayers to hinder the work of the Holy Spirit by asking for blessings or that Father would just forgive that person and ignore their lives of sin, Father will not honor such prayers. Again, His objective is to ensure that we are prepared and ready to stand before the Son of Man. If He must bring down the rod of discipline in order to accomplish this, then so be it. Now some of you listening to this may think you're not good enough to make a judgment against your brother or sister as to whether they are living a holy life or not. Remember that this process must first start with you examining your own self and repenting from your own sins. This is the task of removing your logs from your own eyes. Once that is accomplished, and you can see clearly through Father's spiritual lens, then you can proceed in helping your brother remove his speck from his eye. All this must be done in love, not in arrogance or pride, with the pointing of fingers, but with encouragement and prayer under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Be merciful. After all, not long ago, you were in their same situation. Please understand and honor the sovereignty of our Heavenly Father to make the best judgment call as to how He wishes to proceed in acquiring for Himself a huge hand-time harvest. Hallelujah! All praises to the Most High! Currently the Holy Spirit is severely warning. There are many deceived into thinking that once they profess Yeshua as their Savior that they will escape hell. The belief in Him secures them eternity with Him. If you believe that Yeshua is the Son of the Most High, then how should you be living your life? If you think you can continue in your sinful behavior, addictions, lust, porn, adultery, idolatry, witchcraft, lies, and all sorts of other abominable things, please understand that the end of all that is hell, period. Yes, Yeshua's blood was shed to purify us of, us of our sins, to cleanse us. However, when we repent and are washed, we must not fall back into the same sin, but practice living in holiness. That's why repentance not only means that we're sorry about infracting Yah's laws, but that we understand how we have grieved His heart and will no longer set ourselves on repeating them. One of the main reasons why Yeshua came to earth in human form was to prove to us humans that it is possible to live a holy life and please Father. Satan would want us bound to our sins 
telling us that we can never be perfect or righteous. But this contradicts what Father says in Matthew 5.48, which is, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. And 1 Peter 1.16, which says, Be ye holy, for I am holy. For without holiness no one will see Yah. Hebrews 12.14 I am not talking about our fleshly righteousness, which is nothing but filthy rags before Father. I am talking about Yeshua's breastplate of righteousness over us. Let's not forget that the Bible gives us numerous examples of people whom Yah regarded as righteous or blameless, such as Job, Daniel, Noah, Elizabeth and Zechariah without mentioning all the promises enclosed in the book of Proverbs that pertain to the righteous. If there is no way for us to be righteous, then who are those promises for? Hallelujah! We serve a mighty Elohim who has given us the power to trample over serpents and scorpions, to rebuke demons, to raise back to life. He has given us powerful spiritual weapons capable to fight any size of spiritual warfare and most certainly resist Satan. We must not be slack in reading his word and put it into practice. Memorize scriptures to counteract and defeat Satan's lies. To apply the helmet of salvation. To filter out all the trash from our eyes, our ears, our mouths. We must set ourselves out to follow him wholeheartedly, without looking to the right nor to the left. We must yield to his spirit to direct our steps, even when things do not seem to make any sense to us, for the righteous will live by faith. Romans 1.17, Galatians 3.11, Habakkuk 2.4, and Hebrews 10.38. And faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11.1 1. In other words, we must trust Him wholeheartedly to walk in His anointing, following Yeshua in His righteousness. Father has evaluated that His judgments will cause those who have fallen asleep, those who are living in sin, those who are still sitting on the fence, and those who never thought they needed a relationship with the Most High, to come to the salvation that He has so lovingly and sacrificially offered unto us. Can you fathom the depth of this amazing gift of grace and mercy? If Father does not intervene or did care for us, our defiled conduct would guarantee us a spot in hell. And that is why we cannot pray for blessings and that Father will not rain down His judgments on our family and friends, because we don't want to see them struggling, despairing, hurt, hungry, thirsty, lacking. We must set our eyes on the greater price, which is eternity with Yeshua. This process of purification is absolutely necessary for us. Stand up, church! and put on holy, spotless, wrinkle-free garments in preparing for your bridegroom. On December 15, 2023, the Holy Spirit brought me to Ezekiel 23. This chapter goes hand in hand with part one of this word. Here are the pertinent verses I was given to share. Ezekiel 23, 9 to 10, 35 to 37, and 49. Wherefore I have delivered her into the hand of her lovers, into the hand of the Assyrians, upon whom she doted. These discovered her nakedness. They took away her sons and daughters, and slew her with the sword. And she became famous among women, for they had executed judgment upon her. Therefore, thus saith Yah, because thou hast forgotten me, and cast me behind thy back. Where, therefore bear thou also thy lewdness and thy whoredoms. Yah said moreover unto me, Son of men, wilt thou judge Ahola and Aoliba? 
Yeah, declare unto them their abominations, that they have committed adultery, and blood is in their hands. And with their idols have they committed adultery, and have also caused their sons, whom they bear unto me, to pass for them through the fire to devour them. And they shall recompense your lewdness upon you, and he shall bear the sins of your idols, and he shall know that I am Yah. In the last word, Yah brought up how many are causing their children to pass through the fire and sacrifice them to Molech. When he said, Son of man, will you judge Ahola and Aoliba, declare unto them their abominations. He spoke directly to me to come out and tell you that you will have to face the punishment of your lewdness, prostitution, blood on your hands, and the penalty for your idolatry. The Holy Spirit emphasized that a lot of people, meaning the majority, will die as a consequence of their disobedience. Thus only a small fraction will end up repenting, be delivered and live to tell the story. These are the ones who will receive his judgments as a means to jolt them awake from their sinful lives. Jeremiah eighteen fifteen and 17 Because my people had forgotten me, they have burned incense to vanity, and they have caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths, to walk in paths, in a cast in a way not cast up. I will scatter them as with an east wind before the enemy. I will show them the back and not the face in the day of their calamity. These verses were given to me as confirmations to the first word, where Father said that when the time of testing comes and pleading begins, that he will not hear the first nor the second time, but that his face will be turned away from you. Regarding the ancient paths, Father wants you to return to your first love, to his undefiled word. In October 20, 2022, I released a word entitled, Return to the Ancient Path. Please have a listen to it for more insight. Father said that he has sent his warnings out to his people to reform your ways and actions, but many will reply, it's no use. We will continue with our own plans. Each of us will follow the stubbornness of his evil heart. The warnings have gone out. If you do not listen, know that disaster awaits you. To finish off, I was given a brief rima on December 16th, 2023 to go with this message. Rima, don't forget to tell them about persecution. I will not take it easy on them. I've given them plenty of time to repent. Even now, whomever will return to me, I would welcome into my arms and receive my forgiveness. Tell them, come now. Only, only a small window remains open for repentance before I unleash my judgments over the earth I created. I believe this is self-explanatory. I will attach links to three words I've shared concerning persecution and martyrdom. Please be sure to check them out.